Have you been experiencing diesel shortages where you're at? Have any of the fuel stops been running out of diesel fuel? My dad was in Capus Casing last week, what was it, two weeks ago? And they were having a fuel shortage there. Now, I think it was mostly isolated to that fuel station, I, I'm thinking. Because Capus Casing, if you remember from my past videos where we traveled into Ontario, Capus Casing is on the Northern Highway 11, way, way out, sort of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, a lot of people that live there, but it's, it's kind of a remote location. So I can kind of understand when they have fuel or product shortages, because if anything goes wrong in the supply chain getting it up there, they run out very quickly. It's a popular stop. I don't know what was behind that fuel shortage, but uh, I sort of, you know, raised my eyebrows to that and perked up my ears and I've been trying to hear if anyone else has been having diesel shortages and I just logged on to Transportation Nation this Monday morning and I saw this news article about diesel shortages in the US as well. I'm just wondering if this is becoming more of a, a international issue or if this is just isolated to certain spots. Because whenever someone just starts talking about fuel shortages, I start getting a little nervous like like I've told you especially in last week's videos the importance of keeping our fuel supply going to keep our economy going while at the same time finding alternative fuel sources so that this doesn't become so that we're not so reliant on diesel fuel and not so addicted to it because if it ever disappears one day it will it's a finite resource uh, that we're prepared now we're not running out of diesel fuel anytime quickly there's probably a, an issue in the supply chain but I'm going to read a little bit of this article here and then send you over there to read the full article so you give Transportation Nation your, your traffic. Now this article is from November 5th, 2021. And it's, uh, it's captioned, Major truck stop chains reporting diesel outages and capping fuel purchases. This is from Columbus, Ohio in the U.S. Two major truck stop chains are currently reporting diesel outages and fuel shortages at some locations. According to an email notice sent to customers late Thursday afternoon, Pilot Flying J informed was inf or informed us that four of its stores in the Columbus, Ohio area are facing extremely tight diesel supply conditions. They say, we are working to manage demand across our stores and as a result, select locations may be temporarily down on diesel until the supply situation improves. And that was David Hughes, Senior Vice President of Sales. Our team is bringing in support from surrounding markets to maintain supply at the majority of our locations to keep fleets fueled. And they say the locations that are affected are the pilots in Circleville, Sunbury, Columbus, and Hebron, Ohio. Oh, and Chil Chillicoth, Chillicoth Burst, Berkshire, London, and Millis Millersport, Ohio. Now, this news is a little bit uh, uh, behind. Like I said, this was on the 5th. This issue's probably been corrected by now. But my point is, is this like an ongoing thing or is this just sort of like an isolated event? What's it been like where you're at, uh, whether it be in Canada or the US, or maybe in a different part of the world? I know the UK is facing some fuel shortages. I don't know if you guys have sorted that out already or not. I don't know how Australia is doing, but uh, let me know. I'm, I'm curious to know what's going on around the world with the fuel supply. Let me know down below in the comments. So it is Monday morning. Uh, we're ready for a new week. I believe we have a holiday this week uh, for Remembrance Day here in Canada. That will be uh, Veterans Day for you in the US. Time for us to remember and reflect on the sacrifices that were made for our, for our countries. I was watching a documentary this weekend about uh, World War II. And uh, from the Canadian perspective, I watched one from the US perspective too after Pearl Harbor and how the US got involved. It, it was to say the least, an intense period of time to be alive. A scary period of time to be alive. And we've been without a major global conflict for, what, 80, 70 to 80 years now? We've had little conflicts around the world here and there, but we haven't had a global scale war. And uh, to be honest, our generation has no idea what it would be like. We have no idea. Sure, our, our countries may be prepared for it, 
we always stay ready, we always stay prepared, but the emotional toll it would take on you to watch your family members, loved ones, friends, brothers and sisters go off to a war and never come back on such a large scale. It's something that I can't even wrap my head around what that must have been like. So uh, we have November 11th as our Remembrance Day to focus on that and remember, be thankful for what we have now and try the best we can to understand what they went through just so that we could live in such peace, so that I could live in a world where I can't wrap my head around a global war and what it would be like. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, uh, acknowledge that. In Canada here we have Remembrance Week uh, this year from November 5th to November 11th. So uh, I guess we're extending it because one day really isn't enough, is it? But let's get to some truck in here. It's gonna be a good day today. I can just feel it. It's gonna be a good week. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit warmer today. I'm checking my thermometer or my, my thermometer. My forecast here right now is minus one Celsius to start the day off. It's supposed to go up to plus 10 by 2 p.m. this afternoon. It's supposed to be sunny and clear. So, we don't have any directions yet, but in 10 minutes, the load gods will be in at their stations and I will be ready for whatever they have for me. So whenever they sit down, they can pick up the phone and call me up and say, hey, I need you to do this and I'll be ready. So I can get on it right away and get as much done today as possible. We're always busy, 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 busy. Hey, straw's cheaper. 416 DR. This is our trailer for today. This is our assignment. I don't know what's in it yet, but we're going to figure that out. We're going to go deliver it. I'm going to quickly figure out what's in here. I've just cracked the door open, haven't looked inside yet but I smell lumber. It's a beautiful smell. Yep. Hello, hello, oh, very nice, very nice. I think I know where this is gonna be going to. Well, this is probably gonna be going to that uh, yard that we went to, was it last week or the week before? Close to, close to where the virology lab is at. Out in Winnipeg, down McPhillips. All right, somebody needs their lumber, all right? Somebody wants to build something, and I am a key part of that process. Process, process, process. Process. We're gonna go with that one. You can't build your stuff if I don't bring you your stuff. Hmm? Let's get on it, let's do it. Lights working. Oh no, I got mud on my half fender here. One of my mismatched half fenders is all dirty. Oh no. Gonna have to wipe that off. It's in bull snot later. Best cleaning products around, right? You know that already. Okay. Tires. Oh, they're filled with air. I love it when that happens. Filled with air. Love it when that happens. Check the back lights here. Tail lights, brake lights, marker lights, license plate light working check your hub oil and there it's looking good do that on all four so how have you all been enjoying the daylight savings time thingamajig do you participate in daylight savings time where you're at here in manitoba we dropped back one hour so i got an extra hour of sleep this weekend it was very nice I really like this time of year when we fall back, gaining an extra hour, but we pay for it in spring when we jump forward and we lose an hour of sleep. But you just gotta remember to go to bed earlier then, right? It never really affects me that much. I hear all these stories about how, you know, people are like losing their minds. I, just never, I don't like it, I don't think it's necessary. I wish we wouldn't change our clocks, but it doesn't have any real effect on me. I just go to bed earlier <laughs> so I don't lose that sleep. 
People keep saying, I lost an hour of sleep in springtime. Why? You knew it was coming. Why didn't you go to bed earlier, right? Be gone, trailer. I don't want you anymore. The Swiffer Duster is your best friend. See, when, when the light is hitting the gauge, it's just right like that. You can just see how much dust is actually in your truck. You know, sometimes by dusting it like this, all you're doing is just like spitting it out into the air. So I'm at a Hutterite colony right now, delivering this sweeper. We gotta get that off without hitting any of these things. Cause look at this, this is an SRT 10 Dodge Ram. That's a Dodge Ram with a Viper engine in it. I am definitely not a Dodge fan, but I wouldn't mind a truck like this. Take for a spin once or twice, but we won't be driving this one. Look at this thing. That's a mean looking truck. I'd love to hear it run, but I'm not even gonna start it. I just gotta get that other stuff off the trailer so that we can get to this and get this offloaded for the customer. So it's just along for a short ride while I unload the rest. We're taking good care of it. I'm sure there's somebody anxiously waiting for this. This is actually coming to Winnipeg, not going south, I think. Right, so I gotta clean up the trailer a little bit after I uh, delivered this sweeper here while we're passing by here that's what the interior of an SRT 10 Ram looks like what's that over there? it looks like a six-speed manual it's nice nice trim carefully sneak past it to get to these parts over here Look at that, eh? Good thing it's got that spoiler to hold it down. <laughs> I bet this thing moves. The guys here were actually very creative unloading it from the center. They brought out a big aluminum ramp. And unloaded it right here from the side. Now this is going to Altona. We gotta get this off before we can unload the beast over there. And there you go, all tucked in, nice and safe again. Got one more stop. So these guys here were super creative getting that off. It worked out better with the route to unload the middle one first and in order to drive it off the back, I'd have to unload the next stop as well. But I guess I could have gone to the other stop first and then this one, but that would have taken way longer. I always love coming to visit the Hutterite colonies. They're always so well kept, so clean. And the people are always so friendly with me. All of their equipment is brand new. If you're not too sure what Hutterites are, I'm of a Mennonite background. Uh, from It all originated with the, the guy called Simon Menno, Mennonites. Hutterites are all sort of descendants and follow the teachings of Jacob Hutter. All originated in the Germany, Netherlands area. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And then there's Amish. That's the same thing, but we would call them our extremists. <laughs> they reject all forms of technology. Let's see if I can get around here. I think I can. Carefully go through here. Everything is so well taken care of, so clean, so neat. All their vehicles are clean. Their grain trucks are beautiful. Kenworth, I mean, beautiful Peterbilt. All well taken care of. And they speak a dialect of German, just like us Mennonites. And 
were all sort of related down the bloodline to Amish, Mennonite, Hutterite. We all sort of lived on colonies. I'm, uh, where am I supposed to go here? I'm gonna go this way. I'm what they would call a modern Mennonite. You can't tell me apart from the everyday regular Canadian. People sometimes assume I'm American when they hear me talk or see me. But no, I'm a, I'm a Canadian. I don't follow the Mennonite teachings. So culturally, I guess I'm just Canadian. But my heritage is Mennonite. We used to live on colonies just like this. Steinbach used to be a colony just like this before it was incorporated into like a regular town. So there are many Hutterite colonies in Manitoba, many of them, and they all live right here on site. They work here, they're agriculture based, but they also do a lot of other industry. Uh, the way we would describe it is, you know, the Amish, they reject, most of them reject all technology, all electricity, stuff like that, right? Us Mennonites, we sort of accepted more of the modern world. And then the Hutterites are sort of like the Mennonites. They, they will use farm machinery, uh, vehicles, but some colonies I know take the radios out of their vehicles because that's considered too worldly. So I think they're a little bit more conservative than Mennonites are. At least around here in Manitoba. The Mennonites, we have radio stations, we have electricity, we have power. We, we live just like everybody else. So yeah, they're like my cousins. I guess I get a little nostalgia coming to visit them because it reminds me a lot of, you know, my people, my background. They take such good care of their property too, which, you know, makes it a little treat to come and visit them. They're nice people. And their colonies are usually located down some gravel roads off the main road. A little more secluded like this. This isn't too far from Winnipeg. This is actually pretty close to the big city. But, uh, they own a lot of land and it's sort of like a collective like they all own it together but they have like a, a leadership that all the money goes into the central pot and then the leadership distributes it from there as far as I know I mean I'm not Hutterite so I don't really want to speak on their behalf I believe they do use the internet though so if you are Hutterite and you're watching my video right now feel free to comment down below uh, maybe I got something wrong, or maybe you want to share a little bit more about how your community lives. I'd love to learn more. I'm pretty sure Hutterites use the internet. I know Amish definitely don't, and Mennonites definitely do. So it's it, it probably go it's probably different colony to colony. But I'll be in the comment section. I'd be very interested to hear if one of you live on one of these colonies. I'd love to learn more about your way of life. random car in the bush with a sign that says no trespassing but we can look <laughs> I wonder what it's doing there that would look much nicer all polished up sitting on the side of the road somewhere on cruise night you know wonder if they got any plans anything they want to do with it wonder if it's for sale huh. headed southbound here about to turn westbound funny I'm using my Google GPS but I got Karen right up there but Karen makes me angry so she's she's on the bench right now she's benched she's got to be quiet she keeps telling me to go the wrong way this is highway 205 here this is gonna take us into Rosenort that way and then we go south from there right, down to Altona the mighty, mighty mega city of Rosenort. Population like 1,000 at night and 5,000 during the day. Apparently their population like quadruples. It's a big industry town, a lot of businesses here, but it's a, it's a small town. A lot of people come in from the surrounding uh, countryside to work here. Any of you from around here? Right, we're here in Altona. We have that generator unloaded right over there. And now we're ready to unload the beast. Turned out being quite a long day yet. 
but we're headed home now and uh, they're gonna get that pickup truck unloaded in the morning one second I see my interior lights are on you see that one second just saved myself a whole headache of boosting my truck in the morning. One sec, where's my keys? Why, why are my interior lights on? You know, I think this is my passenger door. My passenger door acts up every now and then. It doesn't open properly. Come on. Oh, did I just lock it again? Come on. Come on. There we go. So I think this here, I have a little piece in here. Oh, no, that light's just staying on. I must have left that on. Well then, there we go. Oh, man. There we go. <laughs> Must really be a late night, I'm pretty tired. Had a whole bunch of things to get done this afternoon yet. Why are my pants here? Don't worry, it's not the pants I'm wearing. These are my lined jeans. I always bring them along at this time of year, just in case it gets cold. Why were they on, were they on the ground there before? Did you see them when I was walking up to the track? What in tarnation? What, in, what's going on? <laughs> I need to go home. I'm the last one here again. And you've clearly been at work too long if you drop your pants on the ground and don't even notice, that means it's time to go home. Definitely. The whole pants dropping scenario. Definitely time to go home. Can you imagine had I not noticed through the back window there, or if I didn't have a back window? If I hadn't noticed that that light was on, the battery would have been dead in the morning and my pants would have been left on the ground right there. I would have just left them there all night. Then we would have found them in the morning and been like, what in tarnation? Why are my pants on the ground in the morning? You know what I mean? Jeepers. See, like this truck, 2025, doesn't have a back window. I would have never known if that was my truck. We hired a new guy. I haven't seen him driving this truck. I haven't had the chance to meet him yet. I think he's going to be driving that truck. Mondays. Mondays! Everything goes wrong on a Monday. Monday. So the errands that I had to do was, uh, we had some paperwork that needed to get stamped at the US border. So I had to cross into the US, go and get our paperwork stamped by US Customs, and then cross back into Canada. And what's the problem with that, you ask? What took so long? Well, what took so long was the, the lineup to cross the border into the US was well, like 15 miles long. I'm exaggerating only by about a mile or two. It was long and it took me all afternoon and into the evening just to get into the US to get them to stamp a piece of paperwork for us. And then crossing back into Canada took five minutes. But yeah, that, that took the majority of my, my day. So we're gonna quickly rush home, jump in the shower, then jump in bed and then close my eyes for a couple of seconds, open them back up and come back to work. One of those days, Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Why don't you like me, Monday? You know, I like the weekend way better. The weekend days treat me so much better than the weekday days, you know? Like I always say, the first five days after the weekend are the worst. But hey, there's only four left now. Actually, three, because we have uh, a day off this week for uh, Remembrance Day. 